It has been a traumatic week of news coverage on the Carbon Street home blast. And tonight we're going to take some time to focus on the community wide gratitude we all feel. Well, pray um, where I think as a community we all need to pray for the victims and uh, again grateful for the first responders. The first thing the mayor of Syracuse did when he went before our cameras Tuesday was rally the community to prayer. That set the tone. At the time, we didn't know the extent of the injuries suffered by the people who were in the house when it blew out. That would only become more clear over the next few days. They suffered burn and blast injuries, and most of the victims rushed to the hospital were children. The other thing we did not know in those first hours after the explosion was that people who live in the Northside neighborhood had run to the scene after they heard the house come apart. Some of the first faces the burned children saw were people who live right down the road, who raced to help. One man named Anthony was among the heroes. It was like a little girl. She was like burnt and everyone's like grabbing her and from my job. They taught us to like wrap her up. Boom. So I was doing that. I like wrapped a little girl up. There's another little girl crying. What Anthony did was selfless, kind, important, and deserving of some sort of medal for being an exceptional neighbor. If only we gave those out. He is the first in a long line of people to thank and be grateful for. There will be a long road ahead when it comes to diagnosing what went wrong inside the house that led to this. Was there something somehow lost in translation about dealing with gas appliances? Do we offer enough help and support to the refugees we welcome to Syracuse? These are questions that linger and answers that will be pursued for accountability's sake. The city has resettled 2,500 refugees in the last year. Tonight, there is something that is apparent. Letting this week pass without documenting gratitude would be a mistake. And we start in that effort tonight with help from Mr. Rogers. A quote from him about helpers has surfaced many times after tragedies and disasters of all sorts. He once told an interviewer that it came from his mother and the way that she would comfort him when the news was bad. She would say, always look for the helpers. There, were, there will always be helpers, you know, even just on the sidelines. That's why I think that if news programs could make a conscious effort of showing rescue teams, of, of showing who, uh, medical people, anybody who is coming into a place where there's a tragedy, to be, to be sure that they include that. Because if you look for the helpers, you'll know that there's hope. The response to the 911 calls from Carbon Street drew helpers by the dozens. Today, the mayor said he doesn't know if he's ever seen this level of response with so many different agencies and so much collaboration, coordination, and communication. More than 60 Syracuse Fire Department personnel, Syracuse Police, AMR Ambulance Crews, National Grid, the Red Cross, the State Office of Fire Prevention, the State Office of Homeland Security, the State Office of Emergency Management, State Police, Centro, Syracuse Code Enforcement, and the DPW. 205 Carbon Street, original call was an explosion, kids screaming, getting multiple calls of fire from residents and the building has collapsed. The Syracuse firefighters who responded to the scene did their life-saving work on the second day of a heat wave in gear that weighs at least 45 pounds. The attic of the house was on the first floor. It had been blown to bits and in their first interview since the blast, the first responding firefighters were so matter of fact about the work they did. Modesty is a modest word for how they view their heroics. Kind of searched all the crevices that we could to see if there was anyone else trapped in the building and made our way back out. You're trying to peer between floors and joists and everything else to make sure everything's, or nobody else is inside. And tonight, gratitude extends to the world-class medicine practiced at our Level 1 Trauma Center. The Upstate Pediatric Emergency Department sees about 27,000 visits a year. They drill and train for situations like this. On Tuesday, an alert went out that eight children were coming in with burns and blast injuries. The hospital leaned heavily on its child life specialists, who always race to a youngster's bedside to help them navigate the trauma of a sudden hospitalization. Because you can imagine, children are, like you said, very stressed. 
they are in an uncomfortable situation. They're injured and they don't understand it. They don't have their parents around. Uh, their parents, they may have seen their parents injured and they're worried about other family members. And Tonight, the hospital tells us that five victims are still in critical condition. The rest have been discharged. That Fred Rogers quote about looking for the helpers has gone viral after tragic news stories, and it gets some criticism from people who don't see its simple empathy. But the only argument they seem to make is that it's too simple, and bad news calls for us to not only look for the helpers, but to, if we can, be the helpers. Next week, we're told, the United Way is going to set up an online fund to help these families.